Yo, what's going on guys and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be trying out something a little bit different. I'm gonna try a little bit more ramble style of video. I'm a big fan of jump cutty YouTube videos like Jeremy Johns and a bunch of film reviewers do this kind of thing. And I'm also a big fan of Before You Buy, which is a game ranks show. And so I thought I'd kind of combine those two styles into this, which is called Should You Play It? It's not a full scale review. I probably won't be scoring games on here usually, but it's just a place for me to talk about a game I've been playing. I think this will be most helpful for the types of games that aren't really full-fledged AAA releases and won't get a ton of views in a review format and wouldn't justify the investment to make a full review of them. But I still want to talk about them because I've been having some fun playing them. So the first episode is going to be on a little game called Pacific Drive. Now, if you're unaware about what Pacific Drive is, it's basically a survival game where the core loop is all around your car. So basically the game starts off and you get this little beaten down shabby little car and you have to drive this car car around and take it on runs. It's sort of a run-based, like, roguelike type of survival game. And so you take this car out on runs, and at first you can only do, like, a short run, where it's, like, three miles away, and you do it real quick, you grab some basic resources, and then you're back to the garage, right? But then as you start building your car up and getting more powerful, you can go on longer runs to further away places to get more rare, more powerful materials, and so that's the basic loop of the game. Now, this game is pretty cool. I mean, I wasn't really that excited for it. I'm not usually the biggest fan of survival games or driving, especially when driving is just first person. I'm really not into it. I'm just usually not into that type of gameplay. It's just not fun to me. I get disoriented. I get motion sick and it's just not my thing. So when I started playing this game and the first few things you have to do is shift your car out of park, turn the ignition on, you know, bullshit like that. I was not feeling it. I was not very excited, but I liked the demo I played, so I gave the game a bit more of a chance. I decided to wait it out and see if I could get into it. And I'm happy I did, because after about an hour, I was pretty hooked. So basically, you start off with this sort of tutorial thing, and it's not very engaging. It's a bit obtuse, kind of confusing, and not very fun. But once you get past that, once you get past the sort of fluff filler beginning, the game really opens itself up to be a pretty fun little spooky, desolate adventure. So the entire game takes place in the Pacific Northwest, and basically the whole setup of it is is the government was doing some secret research lab type Area 51 stuff in this specific area of the Pacific Northwest and your character got stuck in this sort of Area 51 Bermuda Triangle type of thing and now you're trying to escape and your only means to escape are some voices on a radio in your ear and those voices then guide you to a garage where you can start tuning up your car and all of a sudden you're off to the races and things aren't exactly what they seem the game has some like fire watchy gone home type of narrative stuff going on, where it's not super ham-fisted, it's not going to tell you exactly what's going on, and it's sort of leading you down this breadcrumb trail of past events and things that happened in this area with these people, and you have to sort of piece together the clues you're given. And I like storytelling like that. I think storytelling like that is super underrated, and I think it gets a bad rap for no good reason. I really like hearing voices in my head talk about stuff I don't understand yet, but then three or four hours later, all of a sudden, after just being immersed in the deep end, I kind of get a clue for what's going on. On. That's really fun to me. One of my favorite indie games ever is Tacoma, which is made by Fulbright, who also made Gone Home and are making uh, Open Roads, which comes out later this year. And Tacoma is all, it all takes place in a space station, and you basically just pick up all of the story from environmental clues and things left behind by this crew that worked on this space station. And I love storytelling like that. And the storytelling here echoes that same sort of sentiment. It's very, like, a bunch of things have happened between all of these characters that you hear in your head and you don't know what any of it is and you just kind of have to go along with it until you start to understand the inner workings and deeper things beneath these relationships. And I think that's a really cool way into a narrative, especially for a survival game like this, where a lot of it's pretty lonely. It leaves you a lot of time with your thoughts to piece together what's happening in the world around you. And I think that's really neat. I'm also just a fan of the core gameplay loop. What starts off as a sort of tedious, annoying, oh, I have to start my engine. I have to to fill up gas, I have to recharge my battery, I have to put air in my tires, suddenly becomes sort of like a nice little checklist you have in your head of things you have to do before you take your car out. And I think it's really engaging and fun. Usually I hate this type of stuff in games, but when it's the core system of a game, it's a lot more fun. Like sometimes you'll see tedious stuff like this thrown into a much bigger project. Think of like picking up food in Breath of the Wild, where it's just like, I don't really want to be doing this. I don't want to be hunting down animals so I can eat. Like that's just not fun to me, right? When it's part of a bigger 
experience. But when the whole experience is built around this really simple survival crafting loop, it's very engaging. I honestly didn't give the team that made this game enough credit in how far they could take that concept and make it continuously rewarding. I'm now eight or nine hours into the game and I'm still being constantly rewarded with these upgrades and new things. And there's skill trees where you can upgrade new things for your car. So instead of having a shabby door, now you have a steel door, right? And it's more durable, it's more expensive, but that's the trade-off, right? And that's really engaging to me. And that's honestly the biggest surprise of the whole thing is that stuff usually turns me off from a game immediately. But here it's just like the vibes, the music, the driving, it's all just this really fun loop. Now the game's not perfect. There are some annoying hiccups. First being the performance. The game is not optimized very well. I'm playing on an RX 6950 XT and a Ryzen 7 3800X and oh boy, Boy, is it optimized poorly. I started playing off at 4K max. That was a non-starter, but that's fine. My PC, I mean, it was top of the line, right? But now it's like a little bit more upper mid range. So I was like, okay, I'll drop it down to like 4K medium. And then I got a consistent 60, but there was still stuttering all over the place. And honestly, no matter what I've done to this game, unless I drop it to 1080p and play it like medium settings, I get stuttering across the board. It just happens everywhere. If you aim for a more reasonable 30 FPS, it will run fine. But I mean, I should be able to run this game at 60 FPS on my rig without sweating it. I mean, like, it's not like this is a total looker. I mean, the game looks nice. It's got a cool art style, but it's really not that crazy, right? It looks kind of like an upgraded Unity game. So I'm a bit confused as to why that's happening, but I'm not too mad about it. It was made by a small team, so, you know, I'll cut them some slack. Another thing that's not great is just the explanation of some of these mechanics, particularly in the survival world. So in the auto shop, when you're working on your car and stuff like that, that stuff was explained pretty well, and it wasn't that hard to pick up on. But when you're in the survival world, there's certain elements of the world, like there's these plane thingies, these like helicarrier carrier things that'll like drag you across the world. And apparently they're triggered or activated by light, but I didn't realize that until like six or seven hours into the game. Now, probably there was a tutorial somewhere that mentioned that, but it definitely was not explained fully to me in a way that was comprehensible and made sense. So that was a bit frustrating because there were a lot of times where I was doing an evac, like getting, like trying to get out of a zone and back to my garage. And I just got pulled away out of nowhere by one of these helicarrier things. And then I died because of it and lost all of my materials from a run. So that was very, very infuriating. It's not that bad and it's something that if they just added like a slightly more cohesive tutorial for some of the dangerous elements of the world like that, I think it would ease the arrival for many new players in the future. So I would highly recommend they do that. Speaking of the open world, the looting in this game is very satisfying. I mean, it's like actually some of the most satisfying looting I've ever experienced in a crafting game like this. There are materials everywhere. They're very abundant. But what's fun about it is just the collectathon nature of it. Like there's so many materials and there's so many different materials that do different things and are valuable for different reasons that it's really fun to just go around to all these little houses. It sort of feels almost like a Bethesda game loop where you're just constantly picking stuff up. Like it feels a bit similar to the Starfield crafting system where every time I go into a building, I'm picking up everything and sort of just trying to get stuff for my bases, right? It's very clearly the same type of thing that Bethesda was going for in their more recent crafting endeavors in Fallout 4 and Starfield. But I think it's executed here in a way that makes more sense. And since it's not part of a bigger picture, like I was mentioning earlier, makes it a lot more rewarding because the whole crux of the game is the collectathon, right? You're, you're just getting materials to upgrade your car and that's really fun. It's fun when that is the game, right? It's not fun when that's a side game that's like 10th on the list of priorities for the people making the game, because then it feels kind of half-assed, because it is. Also, when you're out on runs collecting materials, you'll also come across little decals and colored paint and stuff so you can customize your car back at the shop. Now that's another sub loop that's actually really engaging here. I had a bunch of fun just picking up paint and stickers and putting it all in my car. I had like a red tiger mobile and then I had like a beige race car dune buggy type of deal. And I'm excited to go back in there and get some more. I don't know if it gets crazier as you go on deeper, longer runs. I'm sure it does. Like the customization and stuff gets a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, I hope so because right now it's cool. It's just a little bare bones with where I'm at in the game. And again, for reference, I'm at like eight, nine hours. So I'm sure that once you start getting into the way deeper runs that go on way longer, that customization evolves in a way that's satisfying. At least I hope so. Fingers crossed. I can't really speak to it, but I would like that. Overall, Pacific Drive is a pretty neat little fun game. The only caveats I have to purchasing it 
are if you're really not into survival games or if you get motion sick really easily, I wouldn't recommend it because even me who plays a lot of video games, specifically first person ones, I got a little bit motion sick. It was way less bad than first person driving in some other games, way better than Cyberpunk, way better than first person GTA 5, but it was, still wasn't perfect. Also, it is just a straight up survival game. I mean, so if you're really not into that type of stuff, then maybe steer clear. If you're like me and you're more in the middle, then maybe this might be the change of pace you're looking for like it was for me. But if you really don't like survival games, then I really don't think you'll get very much out of this one. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Pacific Drive. In short, should you buy it? Yes, I think so. If it looks up your alley, all the things I've talked about so far sound interesting to you, go ahead and buy it. I think you'll be happy. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace!